Welcome back everyone to Creative Live. If you are just joining us now, this is a very fun day where we are doing a rebroadcast of one of our very special collections. It's a skill set, Wedding Essentials, and it's a collection of 25 different videos of our best of our best across a variety of topics within wedding photography. Now, if you are a wedding photographer, you are probably in the midst of your wedding season. It's up and running, and that's, of course, always a time where it's great to get little refreshers uh, and the ability to go back and watch little things from Creative Live is, is truly what it's all about. So I couldn't be more happy to welcome in the midst of our rebroadcast today, a very, very special guest, Susan Stripling, who is joining us via Skype. And we're just gonna take about 15 minutes or less to get caught up on Susan and some of the classes that we're gonna be watching of hers uh, during this rebroadcast. So Susan. How are you doing? Susan Hi. Stripling. Good. Tired. It's wedding season. We, none of us are getting enough sleep or enough good food or anything like that. So we're getting by on um, you know, a couple hours of sleep a night and a lot of coffee. Wow. This is where, <laughs> this is where Susan having uh, her skills down um, is very, very important. When I just asked uh, before we went live, Susan, how many, how many weddings are you shooting this season? Well, this year I'm actually having a nice light year. I'm only doing 46 weddings this year instead, 40 <laughs> instead of 50 plus. Six. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, always, always impressive, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you love what you do, right? Yes. Cool. All right. So let's talk about the three different segments that we are playing as that are part of our skill set wedding essentials. And everybody, if you want to, if you're not in there already, jump in the chat rooms. So we have Russ, who is behind the scenes there and uh, is interacting with you guys. And hopefully we'll have a time for a question or two for Susan. So Susan, the last segment that we just watched before going live uh, was all about getting unique angles and, and framing. So can we talk just a little bit about what we saw in that segment? Because we will be rebroadcasting the rebroadcast later today. <laughs> yeah, that's actually one of my favorite segments that I've done out of everything that I've done for you guys. Uh, sort of trying to explain a little bit about how I make the images that I make and not just lighting, not just lens selection, all of those things that I like to talk about too, but how you actually go about composing the image, not just to make your clients uh, flattered in the photographs, but to have interesting backgrounds, to have interesting angles and interesting elements that help push that story that you're trying to tell forward even more. So I know that you get, you know, you had your 30 days here on Creative Live, Susan, and you get so much positive response to that. And I imagine so many questions uh, from people who have watched what you've already taught as they go out and start to practice those things. So what are some of the most common questions you get uh, about that segment? Well, it's really interesting about that segment. I, I actually have photographers email me a lot, which I love, sending me images that they've shot. You know, after watching my three-day and then after watching especially the 30-day, you know, trying to master that in their, own, in their own work. And it's a difficult thing. I've been doing this. This is my 13th wedding season. Um, so every single time I go out and shoot, I'm trying to find something different and find something more and shoot something better. So people will send me things that they've shot and they'll be like, do you think this angle is interesting enough? Or do you think these lines are leading enough? And the problem is, is they're getting very caught up in making a weird picture or making a different picture and sort of losing sight of what the picture is about. So I'll see images that have these really great leading lines, but no connection with the subject or an unusual angle that's just weird for the sake of being weird. So the thing that I see most and, and the takeaway that I hope everybody gets when they watch this segment and the three day and the 30 day is that everything that you're doing to be creative in your angles, in your composition, they have to help you tell that story. So being weird for the sake of being weird or finding 32 mirrors to shoot into or, you know, some amazing way to shoot into a room from a building across the street, that's great. But if there's no moment there, then, then there's no picture there. I love that vision of 32 mirrors going back and back and back and back. <laughs> it would be kind of cool. <laughs> Can you believe, Susan, that you did 30 days of creative, that 30-day program? I'm, just, I'm just having little flashbacks to how 
not only amazing that was, but how exhausted you were at the end of it. You yes. gave, you gave yes. us, you gave the community your all. Uh, really. I did. I did, and I, I have a little um, post-traumatic stress about it. There was, <laughs> there was some vacationing that had to happen when it was over, but it was really when all is said and done with that thirty days. It was exactly what I wanted it to be, and I was able to really go in depth with everything that I wanted to explain. And it's been really nice hearing the feedback of people both new in the industry and who've been around for a while that it. You know, some people it's helping a lot. Some people it's just helping them fine tune little things here and there. So it's the response has been really amazing. I'd say I'd do it again, but I don't want to say that because you guys might ask me to. So <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm good. Arlene, Amanda, and George did not hear that. <laughs> no, don't give them any ideas. <laughs> so let's move on and talk about marketing because marketing yes. is going to be the next segment that we are playing. Uh, what, what are the biggest takeaways you want people to get from that one? What I want people to really get out of the marketing segment and anything that I talk about in marketing really is that it has nothing to do with how much of a budget that you have or how many blogs you can get featured on or where you're listed and where you've got a full page ad or anything like that. The most important component to everything that I do marketing wise is something I learned from my husband. It's the human relationships that you develop with the other vendors that you work with, with photographers, with venues. and the best marketing of all. You guys actually put something up on Twitter not too long ago, something that I said, which made me sound way smarter than I really am, that the best marketing that you can actually have is to have happy clients. So in a nutshell, be nice to people and be good to your clients. And that is the absolute best thing you can do marketing wise for yourself. Now, do you, Susan, do you stay kind of tried and true to the things that have worked for you in the past? Or is there anything different, say, during the wedding season right now from a marketing perspective that are you trying anything new or are you just kind of like, these things always work for me? <laughs> well, there are the things that always work. And no matter what has kind of come and gone, magazine ads used to be a big thing, then Facebook and then online ads and all of that, you can't replace the human contact with some sort of fancy advertising. So when people get really obsessed with, you know, how many likes or things that they're getting on Facebook whenever they post a wedding gallery, for me it goes right back to, am I still staying true to getting to know the vendors, getting to know the venues, getting to know the coordinators and treating them well? It's very forgotten nowadays that because you can do everything online, doing things in person, a phone call, a letter, you know, actually genuinely caring, not just liking things on Facebook, that will always go a lot further. That said, I'm definitely not ignoring everything that is new, trying to use Instagram to the best of my ability, trying to get out there and market myself digitally. There's, there's got to be a good balance between everything brand new and then things that you know that will work forever. That's nice. Right. What, what is your uh, Instagram handle? Make sure everybody out there is oh. following you. <laughs> Speaking if of. You want to see, in, pretty much everything I shoot on Instagram is done with my phone only. Right. So that's kind of fun. My Instagram handle is just Susan Stripling. It's lots of pictures of weddings and lots of pictures of my kids. Easy peasy. Well, yes. I love following you there too. <laughs> All right. So after marketing, Susan, uh, we're going to go into mastering wedding details. Yes. This is the fun stuff, the pretty yes. stuff. What are some of the things you want people, what do you talk about in that segment and what do you want people to walk away from with that? The most important thing really when it comes to shooting wedding details, well there's two. First is the gear that you use and you'll hear me talk a lot. I mean I don't even need to explain it to you now, you'll get it in great depth, but the lens that I use, the macro lens, the settings that I choose, those are incredibly crucial in getting compelling detail images, the way you light them, whether you choose to use natural light or create the light yourself, that's really important. And then one thing that I think that I do that sets my detail images apart from other people's are the way that I compose the images, being very conscious of my foreground, being very conscious of my background. And the response I've gotten from that has been really great, uh, both in helping people technically, but and also helping people sort of see beyond you put a ring on a table, you take a picture of it. Susan, are you seeing any uh, trends this year in terms of wedding details? Maybe it's trends that the brides are doing, that you're photographing in different ways, or what, what's new? 
Well, actually, what's been really nice this year has sort of been a decrease in wedding details. There was a very large uh, portion of time, a couple of years actually, where wedding blogs were very obsessed with the details, the burlap and the mason jars and the stuff. And I noticed that my clients, sometimes I was going to weddings and they were saying, hey, you know, listen, I'm, we're really sorry. We didn't have time to handcraft a burlap runner made of moss and angel tears. It was almost like they thought that their wedding was inferior because they didn't have those things. And it, that, I thought that was kind of a terrible thing because weddings are amazing even if you don't have a lot of stuff. So this year what I've noticed is a, a marked decrease in the stuff that people have, but the details that they do have are more personal to them. Instead of going on Etsy and buying a bunch of things that don't mean anything to them, they're carrying their grandmother's handkerchief or they're putting pins that are family heirlooms on their bouquets. And so that's been really nice and there's been more of a story to the detail work that I've been doing this year, which which is kind of nice. That's really cool. I mean, I think we, we talk a lot about uh, storytelling. We had Jim Garner on earlier this morning when we kicked off today, and he was talking about art and storytelling and how important that is in the types of clients that he works with. And I think, uh, is there a way that you then uh, theme those images together to tell that story after the fact? How, are you? Are you asking people questions when you see those items? Like, does this mean something to you? Absolutely. To make always. sure? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, it's, I've sort of set a precedent with the ring shots that I do that now most of the time when I go in to start shooting a wedding, the clients are ready. Like, they're like, we've got our rings. We can't wait to see what you're going to do with them. And ah. I mean, can't either because I, I don't go in with any sort of preconceived notion about what I'm going to do. But then I, then I ask, either myself or my assistant, we ask, what other details do you have here that are important to you? Tell us about them. You know, or this handkerchief that you're carrying, whose is it? What does it mean? So then you can start combining things together. You're carrying your grandmother's handkerchief and you're also wearing your grandmother's antique ring. Well, I'm, I might put those together so that they kind of help tell the story together. And then it's a um, curated collection of images that mean something to them instead of just how crazy and interesting can I be with the background that I use? Or, Absolutely. you know, how odd can I be? It's, it's beautiful, but also meaningful. And so important, like you said, to be at the beginning about marketing as you're connecting uh, with yes. those people as well. If you're listening, listening, listening. I can't imagine, though, trying to keep all those stories straight in your head, 46 of them this year. Do you literally, do you take notes? No, I just don't have room for much else up here <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. My husband and my kids' names, but other than that, please don't ask me anything of any importance until about November. Okay, okay, we'll do. But I am going to ask you a couple things. <laughs> uh -oh. oh no! Oh so no. we have some we have folks chiming in at home. So yes. I wanted to take a couple of questions from them. We have a few minutes left. To. Okay, so this question came from JPT. I, it, you mentioned that you use an assistant, but does your assistant help with shooting the wedding, or do you shoot the wedding all day by yourself? No, I actually, my assistant helps me, but she is not a second shooter. And that's something that, you know, if you've watched the 30 days, I go great into depth on that I don't work with a second shooter. And that while my assistant can take pictures, that's not her, her job. Her job is to help me with whatever I need, organizing family formals, parking the car, sometimes taking a picture, but it's all of the shooting is, it is just me. And is that something uh, that you tried using second shooters and didn't work for you? Or is this just something you've always done? No, I've actually never worked with second shooters. And I've, and I've always said, and I'll say it again, if I really found that adding on another photographer would help me, it would help me make better pictures, would help me deliver something better to my client than I would. But, I mean, I have an option for a second shooter on my price list. People can buy it if they want. But most of the time, all it takes is a conversation about their schedule to realize that we don't really need one. Nice. And so it's just me. Nice. Well, thank you for answering that. Sure. We've got one more, maybe, uh, from Photo Girl Hawaii. Hey, how's it going, Photo Girl? Nice. Uh, I'm sure Susan visits the location of the ceremony, but what does she also always? But what does she always visit all the other locations, prep reception, prior to the shoot to formulate ideas? So, first of all, never assume anything. Do you visit anything beforehand? No, I never visit anything beforehand ever. Um, if I've never shot there before, it's not going to be useful for me to go do a site visit unless I'm visiting at exactly the time that I'm going to be shooting and exactly in the right lighting conditions. If I go check out a church at noon in June, 
but I'm really right. going to be shooting there at six o'clock in December. It's not even going to look like the same church. Now, that's not to say that in my early days of being a photographer in my first year or two, that that wouldn't have been a bad idea. It would have been a really good idea. But now I know that as long as I show up early and just take a few minutes to look around, I'll be able to, to go and to go well. So if that's something you need to do, don't feel bad about right, it. It's just right. not something I do. So what are the, what are the go-tos, say you get there? How, how early do you get there and where is it that you go look to make sure you're all set to go? I mean, my assistant and I almost always show up an hour early. And most of that is just because we're terribly paranoid about traffic. I shoot in New York, I shoot in Philly, I shoot in Jersey, the traffic is. If you follow me on Twitter ever, that's one of my favorite rants is talking about, <laughs> talking about the traffic. But we like to get there early. Usually we like to have lunch beforehand. And then we just walk around. You know, I'll walk in and I'll see what the ballroom looks like and how the setup is going. And, you know, a lot of times, like the other day I shot at a catering hall I'd never been at before. And I knew everything that I needed to know about where I was going to shoot by the time I'd driven up the driveway and parked the car. Nice. But that's something that, again, has taken a lot of time to be able to, you know, to, to be better at. And... In early days, maybe I would have had to go two hours early or go on another day and look around. Whatever you need to do, do it. So uh, it is. our time is running out, Susan. No. But we just, I know, it goes so quickly. Um, I do want to ask for one more question because I think it's really important and I'm getting the nod okay from my producer, <laughs> Meg. Uh, but this is from S. Hudo in the chat rooms who says, we're shooting our first wedding in August. Eek. And this is great, great timing for you. And would like to know the one thing that we should remember on the big day. And big thanks. I just want to say that, ask that because it's awesome uh, that you are here and watching when you're about to shoot your first wedding. It's perfect. So biggest, big one thing, most don't important thing. It. Just don't overthink it. You nice. know, don't be prepared. Learn everything that you can. But when you get on the day of the wedding, just go do it. If you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know, oh God, what would so-and-so do? And what did so-and-so say about this? And oh my gosh, maybe I should try this complicated thing. Just put on the white noise in your head and, and go to work. And honestly, as long as you go in with a clear head and having eaten a very good breakfast, you'll, you'll, you'll be good. Don't worry too hard. It's not that bad. I think that is great advice, not just for going to shoot your first wedding, but for life in general. <laughs> Don't overthink it, everyone. Don't, Don't overthink, overthink it. Eat a good breakfast. But yeah, and eat a good breakfast. But truly, just being present and being there and feeling what's going on and doing your thing and focusing on that. I love it. Well, okay. Susan, thank you so, so much uh, for joining us to have this conversation. I want to encourage everybody to tune in uh, for the two next segments that we'll be teaching uh, or we'll be showing of yours. If you are just joining us now, everybody, this is our uh, rebroadcast, and we call it our enhanced rebroadcast, as we had Jim Garner earlier today, as well as Susan Stripling uh, right now. Uh, thank you so much, Susan. I'm going to say goodbye. and. Great. Okay, great, great I will to have visit you. you anytime. <laughs> Fantastic. Love it.